Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. We have none other than Osvaldo Franco in the house. How are we, my fellow? I haven't seen you face to face on YouTube. Well, actually, I did. I saw you the other day when we had that little discussion, but you've not been on the channel for quite a bit now. How are you? Oh, bro. I'm doing well, man, in spite of it all. Uh, how about you? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, apart from looking after two uh, two little cherubs, uh, pretty much all week. Um, I'm fine. But what's been going on? What's what's the agenda for to, wow. today's interview? Well, we're gonna do a brief recap of what's been going on the scuttlebutt in uh, ufology. Uh, brief update on TTSA. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about something coming down the pike soon, uh, eminently, hopefully soon, uh, 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 our next big thing that we're going to be uh, unleashing upon uh, the ufological community uh, soon. So, so a lot of people have been wondering in the past your connection with TTSA. Um, and you said you said you that you you're ready to kind of speak about that a bit more now. Well, somewhat, yeah. Like, well, basically, uh, some people have, uh, well, I'm an investor in TTSA. I put in my money into TTSA, um, put my money where my mouth is. Like I do everything else. Like I'm, you know, out there with my name, you know, my, my full name. My name is Oswaldo Franco. If you speak to me on YouTube, that's really me. Um, I, uh, Basically, I believe in TTSA. I've always believed in TTSA. We're getting remarkable results, and I think it was like perhaps one of the best things I've done is to help uh, TTSA get established in that regard. So something, I mean, the, the actual interview, this is kind of not me for six because we were going to do, speak about something in this interview, and I kind of, I know some of the information, but you, yeah. you, you said you need to hang fire. Can you give mm -hmm. us kind of anything in regards to that? All right. Uh, it's not concerning TTSA. Um, it is, however, ufology related, of course. Um, and it's a very, very interesting uh, uh, turn of events, um, which have some very interesting implications. Uh, I would say that maybe the best episode we've done in terms of like like getting something really useful out to the public was the episode we did about the phenomena, and I would say that this would will be better than that. This will be much more interesting, and uh, we will uh, I don't know we'll, we'll be starting some interesting conversations with this one. I'm looking forward to it, mate. I am. Oh because yeah, I, so am I. I. I have to I have to say, and f for a while I was I was I was kind of worried. Um, I mean, I don't know how much sort of investment you've put into TTSA, but I was worried and I was on a podcast the other day and I said that I was worried. But I'm but then with this whole Pentagon thing, I'm kind of like, well, hang about. This is starting to really turn around now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people that are debunking these three bits of footage that we have I, when the actual pentagon are saying that these are ufos as in i mean they yeah unidentified but i'm pretty sure they'll have people on their end that can debunk things better than you know joe blogs can yeah i mean like really you think the department of defense screwed up but uh you know uh, luckily we have uh you know these these guys on YouTube, they're gonna figure it out. Like like it's 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 very, it's it it it's kind of sad. It, it is, and and I understand. Like we've been disappointed so much in ufology. You know, like it's it's usually the best bet is that this is nothing. You know, but uh, nothing lasts forever, man. And we we it looks like we're we're about to uh, we're we're doing it. We're gonna I I confident we're gonna see major stuff in the very near future. I know we will. I think we spoke about in one of our older interviews that there was 
a fourth piece of footage coming? Fourth piece? Oh, yes. Yeah, so there's other videos that are coming. Uh, yeah. And that apparently, yeah, that's, that is true. I, I don't have any idea about the timetable of the release of that. But um, yeah, more stuff is coming. Uh, are these coming from well. GTSA? Uh, I'm not certain. I would imagine yes. Uh, but uh, there's basically there's rumors that there's more footage that's coming out. These are very, very place, world place rumors. And um, I would be, I think you'd see something soon, more or less. And I think that that's when, when we get more, like, all right, we already have three videos that are already now officially being uh, confirmed as being of military origin. Like they, this is their stuff. And these are indeed identif unidentified. I think when people start seeing more videos and maybe better quality videos from the, that type of source. We're going to like, I think that's when the public is going to start hitting critical mass. I think that's when like things like will very, very slowly, you know, start to creep in. Like, I think right now, like they're comfortable with showing us blobs, you know, <laughs> and that that's fine, but they're getting us used to that. And eventually the blobs will become clearer and then they'll like take more of a shape and then they'll be like, oh, so it's a machine somebody made. You said somebody made? Yes. Somebody from here? Or a machine? Uh, hey, uh, I'll, it's a very advanced machine somebody made. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Um, it seems to me, and I, I, I've been wanting to make a video about this, but it does seem that this whole thing that's been released and that the, they're actually admitting that they are UFOs, it doesn't seem, it seems like the world's not taking it as such a big deal. You know, that, oh yeah, it's like, duh. Yeah, no, no, because it, it's, it's, it's very, like, um, it, it's, it's, it's like, okay, hey, there's lights in the sky, sure, whatever. You know, it, it's, it, it's going to be different when, those things come more into focus and, you know, like, and we start developing technologies based on the study of these devices and those things end up like coming into, uh, you know, the public use, you know, it, it, it's going to like, like that. This is no way that this is going to be right now. It's kind of like, Oh, okay. He, he, aliens. Right. He, he. But there's going to come a point where this is going to be much more intrusive and, you know, and, and, and I, and I, it's going to, right now there's a laugh factor to it because it's obscure and it's still out there. It's like, okay, somewhere out there in the sky, in the ocean, somewhere there's these blobs, you know, and they, and they mess with fighter pilots. Okay. That has nothing to do with me. It, oh yes, it does very much so. And, and that's going to be the hook. That's when, when people realize, holy shit, this is happening and there's implications for this. You know, for me, for my family, the people I know, the people in my immediate neighborhood, you know, et cetera. You know, um, it, it's like, it, like they, they, they're aware of it, but they don't know. You know, yeah. and they're, they're going to know soon. You know, this isn't, and, and, and you have to understand also that this has always been framed in, you know, uh, the lexicon of entertainment. So this is being treated as entertainment still. Um, that, will change, you know, uh, I think we've grown a bit, uh, spoiled, you know, and, 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 and we, we still consider this the realm of something in the realm of belief, you know, like you have a choice when could be Muslim or a Christian or a Jew or an atheist or something, you know, and no, 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 your house is on fire, whether you're a Jew or a Christian or atheist or a Muslim, you know, this is a big deal. It, it seems to me, especially with current events as well, that all of this happening right now, it just seems a bit weird. It's like everything's coming at once. We've got the, the whole lockdown situation. We've got the, the Pentagon actually saying that, yeah, these are UFOs. <laughs> we've got the Stephen Greer film. You know, we've got the battle on the internet between the games consoles, you know, the PlayStation, the Xbox. It's all kind of very weird on the internet at the minute. And it's kind of like, it's, they're trying to get us to, for me, it's they're trying to get me to look a different way. <laughs> well, you, I, you know sure. what I mean? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, well, part of that is distraction because they're trying to, like, listen, everybody's trapped in their house for the most part, all over the place. So um, maybe a little bit of distraction. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. Exactly. Everybody, everybody, there's nothing else to do, you know? So, um, you know, it could be that. It's also a bit of stir craziness. Like, uh, like uh, I've seen, like, I've been handling the situation. That's why I haven't been uh, here. I've been basically outside 16 hours a day since like the whole thing started um, yeah, you've doing relief thick, work been in the thick of it aren't you yeah i was in i live in the one of the heaviest hit neighborhoods at the center of the epidemic from north america and i've been handling that whole uh, situation of doing relief work uh getting food to people uh things like that uh getting you know you. food to, you know, getting food to the hospitals and like officers and like people trapped in their apartments and stuff, which there are like there are a lot of, and like and it, it, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, man. This is like a weird like, not so much now. Now everything is kind of like normalizing, but like like six weeks ago, like this was like a whole. It was a different story. It was like really weird and scary, you know, uh, especially over here for a while. But, uh, you know, we pulled through. This isn't our first, like, weird catastrophe, so. Yeah, every, every time I spoke, we, we, when we spoke briefly, but you've always been busy doing something out and about. You've, you've, ran, uh, you've actually ran me when you're doing your errands around New York. So, you know, respect to you, my friend. D- d- you, That's you why I haven't said- been around. Like, I've been, like, you know, like, like 16, like, dude, I, came, I come home tired and I wake up and I, you know, run back out because there's like a like a huge need you know people are terrified or they were you know yeah you you actually sent me the um stephen greer um links yes i did we watched the documentary together yes um what did you make of that uh more oversold like, dude, honestly, all those films should be released under the banner of the universe, according to Stephen Greer. Um, the, it's, 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 it's ufology for non-ufologists. Like, if you're not very critical of ufology, if you don't, like, if you don't make any difference between Richard Dolan and, say, uh, David Icke, or, you know what I'm saying? Or It's all, you know, uh, apples to you. Hey, I, I like David Icke. Yeah, uh, he's Some a, things he says make sense. Oh yeah, but he's definitely a crazy uncle, though. You can't like take everything. I, he's I would have him as a crazy uncle. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, I don't like. I don't. I don't hate David Icke, but I'm not. You know, I, I'm not gonna buy a house from him. Well, no, I, but I think he lives in a part an apartment anyway. Um, no, does he live on the Isle of Man? Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. You're right. It's lovely, the Isle of Man. I heard. It the, looks nice. The Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Um, Stephen actually spoke briefly, just for a brief moment, about To the Stars Academy. I don't know if he actually said the name To the Stars Academy, but he was definitely speaking about To the Stars oh, Academy. Oh, yes. And that, 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 that these, are the, these are the people that work for the Cabal, and they're going to destroy us. I will save you. <laughs> like, dude, like enough, enough, Doctor Greer. Is enough. that your Greer impression? Yeah, sort of. Yes. So, well, you know, because I can't. He sounds like Reverend Reverend Lovejoy. I wish I could do a better Reverend Lovejoy. Like if they ever, <laughs> they ever did an animated Doctor Greer, that's who would do the voice. Well, but well, uh, my uh, my Homer Homer Greer. Yeah. You've seen it. You know the Homer Simpson. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. But you know, like it, it's like listen. If you're a scholar, if you're really into ufology, you, you don't, like, you didn't need to watch this. You knew all of this. And, like, I don't like, like, like dude, you know what? Spend some money. Get, make some really, really good uh, uh, facsimiles. Like, you know, and, and say that they're facsimiles. Like, we're recreating, we're in a recreation of something. You know, and then splice in the good videos of UFOs. Don't splice in parts of good videos with UFOs and put them in with a bunch of stuff that we know are like 
divers at night, skydivers at night, you know, doing. Yeah, that fooled uh, me for a second. It did fool me for a second. I thought, what the hell is that? That's amazing. Yeah, but for you, only a second. Everybody else is running around thinking that that's a UFO weeks after the fact. Well, I did make a video on it, but then I quickly made a video again, correcting myself. Um, it's for me the fact that he actually kind of he's saying again that TTSA is and Tom DeLong, you know, they've pulled the wool over his eyes, you know. It's yeah. poor Tom. You know, they fooled him. I, I would say this though. I would say, like, listen, I, and I yes, and I am a TTSA investor. Um, and I'll tell you why. So you're biased. Oh, I'm very biased, but I'll tell you why. I'm biased for good reasons. Like I said, I've been doing this for a very long time. I remember being a kid and meeting Stephen Greer and the excitement when the Disclosure Project was new. Like, it was palpable. Like, wow, we were, like, we, were, we were finally on the road. And we were. I mean, without the Disclosure Project, I don't think TTSA would exist. So you, know, you must give credit where credit is due. How old were you when you met Stephen Greer? Gosh, I was, I met him, first time I met him was briefly, I was maybe 14, and then I met him again after Disclosure Project had come out. He had come to New York City and he did a, um, a brief presentation, you know, following with the, 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 the video clips. This is back before the internet really was, you know, a thing, and, or as, as, as ubiquitous as it is now, or as fast. Is that when you, when you sat across the table from him? Yes. I, yeah, I, I sat, well, I, uh, but I would, again, I was a young physics major and I had gotten into science because of ufology. So to me, this, like, like, you have to understand, Stephen Greer was bringing these things out. And Stephen Greer, I remember this, he was at, we were at a lecture hall and um, he was telling people that for $500,000, he could build an anti-gravity platform, like some type of proof of concept thing, and then basically have it hover, and he could like move it around the room and back in if he could just get the funding. And uh, then, and he was working on that. And then years later, he announced the Orion Project. Uh, he was going to get funds together and build these over Unity devices and things like that, and he was going to get them out. And you know, decades passed, and none of that happened. We're still waiting for Stephen to come through with that stuff. It's like Stephen like, basically gave everything he had in one go. And I still believe that. I don't know how much real hard information he has. He's still doing stuff. But honestly, it's going at a snail's pace. And um, like we have nothing to show for it. Now, flat, fast forward, TTSA has been around for five years. What have we gotten out of TTSA? Gun camera footage from the government. We've gotten, like, you know, like they're doing analysis of these the, the materials that are being, you know, found, and they're going to be making devices based on that. Like, this is a go. They're actually doing these things, you know? There's huge progress that's coming actually from TTSA and not the Disclosure Project, quite honestly. Yeah, they're getting the word out and, you know, but it, it's not the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to run a, a message that is contrary to what's being put out. It's another thing to get the government to, like, say, okay, yeah, no, we do have this. And, like, you know, and look at that. And, like, that's extraordinary, you know, that that is happening. You, you might know this because I've not seen it, but has, has Tom DeLong actually – ever said anything in his defense to what Stephen Greer has been saying? No. And I, oh, you know what, to my knowledge, no. And you know what? He should be above the fray. Like I, Tom DeLong's deeds speak louder than anything he could say or anything his detractors can hurl at him. Honestly. And like, and, and so far they've all been defeated. All of them have egg on their face. Where are they? You know, where are they? They're not apologizing. They're not saying shit. Yeah. I'm surprised you know? that we haven't seen um, Dr. Greer go on uh, Joe Rogan again with the new film and everything. Yeah, that's true. I, but honestly, like, 
he already did his interview with, with Dr. Greer. Like you're, if you, listen, but Dr. Greer says a lot of the same shit over and over again, constantly. Um, like we know, like, especially if you're a student of this, you, you know what Dr. Greer probably has to say. It's the same thing he said before. Uh, sometimes he brings up new stuff. Like uh, a few years ago, he brought up that uh, he was working with like elements of the Sarkozy uh, uh, government in France back before he was voted out. Um, and that came out. And that is true. He did. He was working with on, with them on that, but um, I don't know. Like uh, it seems like uh, the way Dr. Greer is doing things isn't working as well as the way Tom DeLonge has is figured things out and got it working. So, but you're not saying that Greer is lying to us. I don't. You know, I I'm sure Greer believes a lot of what he says. And, and a lot of it is true. Greer has a lot of facts on his side. I'm just saying that things might not be as black and white as Stephen Greer presents them. Mm. I'm saying that there might be more to this than uh, Greer or DeLong. Because you know. he, he did look quite believable, you know, when he burst into tears about the people that have died under him. And I was like, really? did, just, I, did, I didn't, did you I think didn't. he turned that on? I, I, it felt kind of like, I, you know what? He's told that story so many times, and I've seen him cry so many times while telling that story. It, it's like, like I'm immune. Uh, it's the like, first time I've seen him cry. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I, I actually, honestly, I actually, I, I choked up a little bit inside. Well, I guess well, you heard it for the first time. It's not like I've heard that like you know many, many, many times. I've seen that story. I've seen him do it in person. I, I, listen, I'm uh, I'm not laughing as well if you know it's true and these people did die. Oh yeah. You no, know. those listen. Those people are heroes. They helped. They gave their lives to the study of ufology and trying to help humanity in that capacity. Those people are absolutely heroes. You know, but. Um, there's only so many times we can hear the same story again and again. So he is telling the truth. In that regard, yeah, I would not be surprised. Listen, ufology has, we have a, a, a weird death problem in our yeah, field. Yeah, yeah. Was like, it's just, Stephen Greer would not, and his group would not be the first people to have had run, run-ins with like un, ungodly, bizarre, bad luck, you know, that questions like, you know, credulity when dealing with this subject. Um, there have been a lot of people, you know, there's, uh, that have had like weird ends, you know, uh, that have like worked on things like that and over unity devices, uh, 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 scientists that have worked in UFOs. Oz, am I safe? No. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> That's how I stay in the game so long. I I, I throw up other guys. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? I mean, I I, I actually I unidentified. I enjoyed. Uh, it was entertaining, you know. Um, oh, unidentified was better than uh, I think than Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the the thing the thing is. I, I hope that the next season of Unidentified, the, they show us more. I, I want to see these materials. Well, that's the rumor. Like, and like, there's, uh, they're saying that this next season is going to be very interesting and they're going to throw some stuff at us. I hope so, because Unidentified was kind of clinical, you know, and, uh, and, and I, and I honestly, and I've said this before, I fell asleep during some of those, because I've, I've you know, I think I, I did one of them, but I rewatched it, and uh, you know. Yeah, of course, you know, but like, but we do this, you know, we we know a lot about these details as you know, as it is, you know, and like for guys like us, we want to know the new thing, you know, um, and that and Greer stuff is a bunch of old stuff for us, you know, for the general public, this is new, you know, even if we like, you know, like even though like you know, I have people that I've told this shit to for years, did not pay attention to this. Calling me up, oh my God, Dr. Gru, you know about the CE5 thing? You mean that thing I invited you to at the park? You didn't go? <laughs> like, oh, that's what that was? So this thing that Gru is claiming that he can do, where he can, you know, go out out of his mind and body, whatever, you know, he can look into Area 51, is, is, is that a thing? 
Yeah, you can uh, you can get into altered consciousnesses and do some crazy stuff. Yeah, do you think Greer can do it? I think everybody can do it to an extent, to a greater or lesser extent. But then there's things that Greer says that are just like, 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 come on, like, please, like, all right, like, they'll be like, oh yes, well, I discovered, uh, dude, I created the protocols because I told, I taught the aliens the protocols. You see? And it's like, no, you didn't. The best impression that I have heard. Of no, no, dude, dude, dude. How about? How and about they the had, best. Dude, we had, and 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 uh, in South America, there were groups doing this in the 80s and the 70s. Basically, what Stephen Greer did was he like he was aware of these groups, and um, basically he translated some of that stuff from Spanish to English, as nobody knew about that was going on uh, at the time. And I know about this because my mom was involved with those groups. Yeah, and then back in the day, they were Spanish only even the ones that were operating out of New York. So your your UFO history, I, I totally forgot about that, it goes way back, doesn't it? It goes back to your mom as well. Yeah. Um, again, let's uh, you remember, everybody can see the uh, video we did. Uh, I had a up-close UFO encounter, which may or may not have, that, that's what the impetus was, my mom trying to do I'll that. I'll leave it in the description. Yeah, leave it in the description. And basically what happened was, after this had happened, uh, it turns out that my mother had been into UFOs for years and years and years. I had no idea. Uh, and then the way I found out was that my mom would keep these books in her closet. And after we had this experience, like my, I was, like I said, I was space mad. I was born like, like I love space since I was a little boy. It's like your, your son with the rocket ship. You know, he's probably the same way. He's going to love space stuff for his whole life. So there was really no way of stopping me from doing this. You know, I had to learn more and my mother basically took me to the closet and there was like dozens and dozens of books and I started reading them. And then before long, I had read all of those books and I needed more books. So I would go with my mother to these these uh, lectures and um, conventions and stuff and I would get more books and I would read books. And then um, by the time I was 11 or 12, I would start talking to people at the bookstores, like in these little conventions. And I tell you, you want to read this book, you want to read that book, this one is good, and whatever. And you know, we're waiting for this and that. And I had a lot of information about this. And then people would start listening to me talk. And that's how I started doing speaking engagements. And I was like very, very young. Um, and uh, this is the thing. Like, there's been a lot of groups of people that have done this before. Like the, the CE5 stuff. In fact, Greer's not the first person to start signaling them with lights. That's been going on for like since the 60s, at least. Um, there have been bits and pieces of this going on for a while. So that's like, I think that's disingenuous to, to say, I'm going to say, I think, but we can put this together and, you know, um, basically pretty much prove that there are people that have been doing that type of stuff for uh, a lot longer than Stephen Greer has. You know, the bit where, and it's kind of a famous uh, bit where Greer's on the beach with his, his mates and those lights come up out at sea yeah those are military flares i was gonna say did you, you did you think that greer had somewhere in a boat out at sea and just shot a flare up it in the air be. it could be because like honestly some of the footage that he shows is is pretty good and other stuff is just like wonky is like what well, come on like ah uh, like i you know what i'm saying and it's it's I, again I, I think some of it is oversold to say the least. There is one, there's one thing that always sticks out for me, and, and I think I've, I've told this a couple of times now, but when, um, when if you remember the, the first documentary, what, Serious Disclosure, was it, with the yeah. little Anna? Oh, God, yeah. My name, is in the, my name is in the credits on that one, because I, I sent them money to help. Oh, is <laughs> it? Uh, yeah, but, like, and I was just all, dude, I sat there looking at that thing through the cracks in my fingers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's something weird that here for me. That So what's it called there? The Anacana? What the, what's it called now? Yeah. The, I'll, put, I'll, put it up, then I'll put the name up now. Stephen Jr. <laughs> yeah, the, the little, little girl. Um, so if you remember... There was a, a doctor called Gary Nolan that was yes. work, that was working 
that was working working for Greer, really. You know, he was doing all yeah, the research. It, it's for actually him. Be, he's going to be prominently featured in the phenomena, actually. Yeah. So, and that's interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Um, Soon, September. But then he went over to TTSA, and as, as soon as he went over to TTSA, it's like the, he changed his tune. You know, he's yeah. changed. Oh, oh, it's not just him. It's not just him. Um, Chris Mellon. When Chris Mellon first came on the scene. Yeah, but Chris Mellon's TTSA, isn't he? Yeah, how he is. He, this was not – Chris Mellon came out before he was involved with TTSA. Now, if you look at Chris Mellon's early stuff, he's a lot more on the fence. Like, yes, there's something here, but it's just so ambiguous type thing, you know? Now he's much more into, like, you know, giving details and stuff. In fact, he did a Q&A um, uh, for TTSA a few days ago. Um, and, you know, and he's, and he's done a lot of other stuff. Like, he posted – this video on uh, Twitter of something flying in space. And um, and it was taken down, but people found it. And um, and it was off of Twitter for a while after that um, because it, uh, people started coming after him and he just really did, you know, you know how it is. Like he, and he didn't have time or, you know, the need to to, to deal with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he, he like, yeah, a lot of guys like, like, I don't know if it's like he was holding back before or if that was his opinion at that point and then TTSA came about and then they took him to a skiff and they showed him you know a bunch of stuff and then it's uh, you know you have to change, change your tune accordingly um you know uh, I don't know what the deal is uh but uh it is what it is and yeah he was uh he was a it was a lot more I would say wishy-washy in regards to the subject as opposed to now where he was like you know full on board TTSA all the way yeah, it's just, it was. I just found it weird that you know Gary Nolan, you know, is working with Greer. He he said that you know he, that there was evidence that it didn't look like it was you know a fetus. It looked like it was a what did they say? It was eight years old or something like that. Yeah, it was it's some type of weird abnormality, you know. Yeah, and um, but, then, but then it it changed. It all changed when he went to work for TTSA, and TTSA broke the story that yeah. it was a. And Greer, when he went and did a video, and he he gave me a um, a copyright claim for <laughs> for having his back on that one because as I did say it was weird. He didn't. I you think see, was, dude, I told you Stephen Greer is like. It, it's like no. Do you see, dude? No, 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 no. To no. be fair, I, I think it might have been the bot that did it. You know, the the YouTube Perhaps. bot. But, um, yeah, I just thought it was a little bit weird that Gary was very much all about this little girl, alien, <laughs> whatever. And now it is just it was it's just a little fetus with a weird uh, abnormality that's very, very, very rare. Mm. Yeah, well, but not only that, I. Like, the, the other weird part is that he was working on this thing and maybe it could have been alien and then he found out that it wasn't and instead of being oh well it wasn't let me go back to doing like you know high level research he goes further who gary yeah instead of like you know like oh well because you know, gary's official gary doesn't need ufology for anything you know what i'm saying in fact ufology will probably bring him more troubles than anything however even coming back with a negative result, he's like doing work with TTSA. That's a, you know what I'm saying? That's a very, very interesting thing. Like normally a scientist would be like, oh no, I've been tainted and drop the subject and never wanting to talk about it again. They don't go further into it. Yeah, that's true. So I, who knows what the deal is with that? That That is a weird indiscretion, indiscrepancy. Um, like I'm sure like somehow we'll find something out over time. But uh, yeah, that 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 was a bit weird, you know. Um, that and uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens because, like I said, there's a lot more that's coming on uh, down s soon with uh, TTSA. Uh, Tom DeLonge did an interview recently for the Tech Show, and uh, he basically uh, outlined what's going on and what are the trajectory, you know, the plan for TTSA, and they've got a lot of stuff coming up soon. 
Um, like we're going to listen, we, we talk like right now we're getting videos, but we're going to get some like interesting stuff out of them very, very shortly. Um, and even Tom says it's a lot. And he's like, literally, the one was saying, like, you know, like, you know, hold, like, get ready, because it's, it's like just the tip of the iceberg in regards to what people are going to find out publicly really does exist. I look forward to it, mate. I, I really do. Um, and, I, you know, if, if TTSA have that fourth piece of footage, I hope it's something different, you know. I, I mean, it, I know it is what it is. When, when it gets released but i hope it's something that you kind of look at and you even the debunkers are like yeah i would like more clarity and you know, those what, you know what, what the hell is that what yeah. is that? and something in the visual spectrum would be nice too if possible yeah it would it really would um but yeah it's, it's exciting it's exciting it's exciting times we live in people and i think Thank i God. think there's, there's so many people out there that seem to want it to just fail. And I mean, you, you have, they, seem to want, they seem to want ufology to fail. And, and, it's like, and, a union, and it's from within ufology. That's yeah. the worst part. It's from within ufology. Because these people, listen, these guys have their fiefdoms. You know, they live off of people's ignorance of this subject. And the fact that it's like, you know... Uh, all you can do is listen to the stories because there's no tangible evidence. What happens when there's tangible evidence? You know, what happens when um, you're not, you're, you're, there's light over your dark recess, you know, and it's no longer so dark and creepy and everybody can come in. You know, like a lot of these guys are upset with their, um, their lack of a place in a world where this is going to be mainstream. So how long do you think it's going to be before it's pretty much mainstream? That depends. It depends on what comes out in the next couple of months. Uh, like you, do you, you see the. This year? Do you think something's going to come I, out this year? Yeah. Well, we we know. Uh, we know. Uh, you saw the the phenomena or the, yep. the rough cut. Uh, yep. So we know. Yeah. There's stuff. There's big stuff coming. Huge Very stuff big. that's going to be hard. Like. It's not really possible to ignore. You know, it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson said, well, where's the ashtray? Here you go, Neil. Now what? Yeah, because Neil was like, <laughs> he, he, he kind of slayed that footage. Yeah, and, and, he, yeah, and where has he been since the military's, no, 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 this is ours. <laughs> like, I mean, like, really, dude, you work at the planetarium, and you're not in the military, you think... They screwed up the analysis. It's not perhaps that you don't know what you're talking about. You know, this is not your field of expertise. You know, this is not from a telescope. It's from a FLIR can. They're not the same thing. And, it, yeah. it, it, and, it's, and then honestly, like, it's clear that he's just, listen, he's a cop. Neil is a cop. He will tell you not to do drugs, even though marijuana might be the thing that saves your life. As that's his job. He oh, might even go home and smoke some for his cataracts. But he's not going to tell you that. He's going to tell you, stay away from drugs, because that's his job. If he starts talking about UFOs, or, like, dude, there's camps. Well, like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll change the locks. Dude, if he starts talking about UFOs, the real... <laughs> See, be dead right, baby. But exactly. Um, unless you can get THC. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's left but, um yeah but it's he's like like listen he, he he's a politician you know like like yeah he's a physicist but i doubt he does a lot of math in a day you know uh it's like you know basically he's uh um he's the poster guy for the status quo and the status quo is about to change dramatically you know um and like and good riddance because he's he's a jerk honestly he's a jerk he um He's disingenuous, uh, doesn't tell the whole truth about himself in a lot of regards um, that, that are, is suspicious and also political. Um, you know, this is not a man that puts science above everything. Let's just say that. Uh, and and this, everything I said is, is verifiable, actually. You, you do some digging into Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, life. And not that Me Too accusation stuff, that 
seems to be nonsense. But there's other stuff, like legit stuff that he'll tell you if you if you if you corner him. Well, he is an actor. He he's acted. He actually is an actor. You know. Yeah, he, but he so what? Yeah, and so I, I've been in school not plays. Not, I'm an actor. Not, but yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> not, but that's a, that doesn't mean to say that he isn't a physicist. Uh, I can't even say that word. No, physicist. yeah, no, no, no. He's a listen. He the weatherman is a meteorologist, but he also works for a media outlet. He does what they tell him to do. He says what they tell him to say. Um, if he goes off record, he loses his job. You know, um, that's the part of the problem. Uh, and, and, and and honestly, when institu- when the world's institutions are against your message, you know, it, it gets to be an issue. Um, but it's you know, and Nye is not innocent as well. Bill Nye is awful. The fact that they're best friends makes a lot of sense. You know, um, it's it's like you know, and, and they all have like like weird UFO dirt. You know, each one of them is dirty in regards to this subject matter. And, uh, like, honestly, like, dude, they they have egg on their face. And I don't know how they're going to, like, honestly, they're going to look horrible. They're going to look awful when this comes out. You know, these are the guys that should have been at the forefront of this. These are the people the public trusts, you know, that tell them truth from lies. And they were all along, like, not only pig-headedly wrong about the subject, but literally steering millions of people against the subject and the people trying to further it. Yeah, I remember Bill Nye did, um, he said quite a lot. I can't remember who he said it to now, but he was having an argument. Oh, it was Larry King. Yeah. About UFOs? That was the most, the most grievous, yeah. Like, he, he, like, basically, you know, he came, like, you know, he came on to talk about, oh, don't worry, folks, this is just, you know, like, atmospheric effects and lights and, like, you know, people that don't know what they see, you know? And then they had, like, you know, people that did know what they see and had military clearance. You know, uh, uh, I remember he was uh, uh, he was uh, in an argument with a, an older guy that was uh, one of the witnesses to one of the uh, missiles getting shot down in the 60s that were launched by a UFO. And so you got this guy who was, a, who was an engineer and uh, primarily an actor trying to uh, shot down this witness who was a professor of physics now, who wasn't the professor of physics at the time when this happened, you know, um, and uh, uh, like, and, and he just like basically uh, tried to just brush this guy off, and you know, like the same, you know, what they've always done. But once again, these these arguments don't hold water. And at some point, this has to come back on them. You know, like they they, they even look like jerks. Like like Neil deGrasse Tyson did basically a um, comedy routine about UFOs. You know, and there was laughter in the audience. It was like, oh, come on. Like, he they basically, he took a, it, it, it's like he, he he read the back of, like, a couple of books by David Icke. He's like, oh, I got it. I know ufology. You know, and it's like, no, you yeah, don't. Again with my boy, David. Well, he's done a lot to to, to, to hurt some of this. Uh, we didn't need no shape-shifting reptilians. We were, we were, we're weird enough. <laughs> He he stopped he stopped speaking about the reptilians. Yeah, because he shot himself in the foot, dude. Did you see him? Um, uh, uh, he he did a um, an interview with Bill Maher, you know the American comedian. Yeah, you know how that is. Okay, and Bill Maher is very political, and they're they're walking outside the Vatican, and you know the and the thing is, it's like David Icke says a lot of stuff that's important. You know, like the banks are like against you and there's these families with a lot of money and they're doing this and that and they've been doing this for generations and like yeah that's exactly right and he was like on point and then um mar talks about the shape-shifting reptilians and then you see the look in ike's face like this oh, briefly and he shuts it down and tries to go back into uh like oh no you heard about that <laughs> and then he like tries to, to go i haven't and, seen know, that Clip. Oh, know. it's great. I'm going to send you the clip. I, it's, it's on YouTube. You don't need to see the whole yeah. movie. Just the look on David Icke's face is priceless. Send that. Send it's that. priceless. It, it's like, it, it, see, we don't need that shit, man. It's like, we're strange enough. Like I, well, said, we, I, do, I do think, though, and I, I'm going to have uh, my boys back here, David. 
Uh, you need to, David, if you're watching this, you need to come on the channel because I'm licking some serious ass here. Um, but you know, he may have he may have thought about these being reptilians for a long, long time, and then he may have done a lot of research. He may have just actually thought this because he's he's travelled and he's 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 been reading us a lot of stuff about you know the tribes and how these tribes saw these reptilian people and this that and the other. And, you know, he put two and two together and said, you know what, the Queen's a lizard. <laughs> yeah, and she shapeshifts. It's like, no, it's like, and I go, why would a lizard shapeshift? I mean, but, why would their primary form be a lizard and then turn or, into other shit? <laughs> I mean, that makes no sense. Did you realize what would have to happen to your bones in order to shapeshift? I mean, it would make more sense if you were putty and you turned into other stuff. There's no shapeshifters. If they were, I don't think like, dude. If they were, if there were shapeshifters, I think they'd have to be fundamentally, physiologically much different than like a solid life form like you and I. You know, that it it would be like it would make more sense if they were made out of energy and just took different, you know, forms from like from there. You know, than to say, well, I start out as a lizard and then I turn into like you know an old an old lady that sits on a throne, rules England. There is a lot of people that speak about these shapeshifters, and I'm not into these pixelated videos because I'm pretty sure that oh, no, you and no, I... It would make more sense to me, dude. It, it would make more times. sense to me if they were telepathic and they were throwing a message into your head, if they did that, right? And then yeah. sometimes somebody was immune to it or if there was some type of cloaking device and sometimes it gets on the fritz from time to time, you know, or was running low on energy that didn't charge it up. So, like, you know... Something happened. Uh, That's the glitch. Yeah. Then to tell me that a lizard turns into people, you know, without surgery or like maybe with surgery or like you know complex. And even then, it's like it better even dude. How about this? If we had nanotechnology, it might even still be impossible. You know, or or take a lot longer or be excruciating. Like they're talking about like you know shape-shifting like on some like you know mystique from the x-men you know one second she's professor x the next second she's magneto the next section she's herself next you know she's somebody else yeah i just you know i, I need to see this this interview where it just gets shut down yeah it's just he's the look on his face just 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 yeah do me a favor just do a freeze frame the look on his face you'll know you'll see it it's, I'll put it's it wonderful down. <laughs> yeah you know whether, whether the lizards <laughs> whether the robots i yes. know and, and, and hold on and i'm not saying there aren't intelligent lizards out there totally dude there's it's a wilderness you know i'm we're gonna find some incredible stuff out there i'm just not sure that they're the ones that are like calling the shots on earth or, or you know <laughs> our lizards you know, our reptiles are intelligent. Oh, yeah. They, they can clean their eyeballs with the tongue. Yeah, you okay. Know. That's I superior. Can, I mean, I know it's not intelligent, but just the, the to know you've got an eye there and just to aim the tongue on the eyeball. Yeah, he's, you know, he's aware enough to do that. It's, it's it the is. intelligent design, should I say. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's right, exactly. There we go. That shit again. <laughs> and they change, they, I mean, they change fucking color for, for crying out loud. Yeah, but that's a cloaking device. It's not shape shifting. That you know, that's that, that's that's like like we maybe can do they, the same. Maybe these, maybe the reptilians, you know, they have a, they, they've evolved. That that's still like like, like that's still not oh, a great explanation. Are you a reptilian? No, I wish. If I was a reptilian, I'd be ruling your country. This is true. That's true. I'd, I'd be, uh, what's the PM? What's his face? <laughs> it, back to, because we haven't got long left, but so TTSA and Dr. Greer. I'm, I'm going to bring that up. Go back. I'm going to go back there again. I would like to see somebody get Dr. Greer on a show with Tom DeLong, maybe oh, somebody okay. else, maybe somebody else from Greer's team, and get Lou on, and just let him 
you know, have a little discussion over maybe a cup of tea or, or a beer. No, because listen, Stephen Greer's going to grandstand and he's going to be like, you're a part of the cabal and blah, 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 and, like, and, and shit. And then they're going to stand there and be like, okay, sure. And here's your free energy device that you were supposed to build. And here's your, <laughs> no, and here's our sp- that anti gravity platform you told us you had back in 2000. Now I think here. Stephen would just probably speak over them. <laughs> yeah, no, he would. He would. It would be very dramatic, and and they would probably just lay back and let the facts, you know, fall where they are. I mean, like, there's a lot of drama in Greer's camp, and I I I, I don't like drama. You know, uh, oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who subscribes to this channel. Knows that I love the drama. <laughs> it, I thrive on it. But you know, this is this is what YouTubers do with with, with the scum of the earth. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I am looking forward to unidentified series two though, and I, I think this whole thing that's gone off with these with these three bits of footage that's finally kind of been given the this is real um it's going to be made for an amazing show oh yeah no like we're primed and ready for the next shooter drop at the end of the day and that's what's going to happen there's going to be another shoe that's going to drop soon whether that's uh like the stuff that's going to be revealed in uh, the phenomena coming again in september uh tentatively like uh is it going to be something else released by ttsa it's going to be a combination of things um, are we going to see something from a uh, foreign nation, you know, starting to like, you know, like, uh, there, again, there's rumors that England, England is supposed to be doing a, a large scale, like document dump soon ish. Yeah, we've, we've, been prom- yeah, we've been promised that for like about a year now, a little bit more, but the fact is we were promised that something is going to come out at some point. I think they're, you know, maybe they're waiting for, uh, something else to drop and then, Throw that out there and see what happens. Do you know, I might start a let's uh, let's raid Rendlesham Forest. You know, like let's, let's yeah, raid. Why not? There's nothing there anyway. <laughs> just the forest. But let's all just let's all just go to the forest. Yeah, dude, perfect spot for a rave. UFO rave, man. Everybody have a blast. Oh, speaking of, I keep going back to Greer, but he had um, he had the guy from. Um, like oh, what's his name? Oh, Mickey, Mikey. The, oh, what was his name now? The guy who organised the. Well, he kind of he he, he said let's raid Area Fifty One. Then he. Oh, he, he said that, that bit off more than he could chew. Yeah. What's his what's he called now? I forgot his name. I forget his name. I forget his name. Like, see, uh, man. See what see when you're playing with fire. Stephen had him on. Got yeah, to Green. I saw. I saw he part of that, yeah. All, all Stephen did was talk about his life. He had him on for an interview and didn't didn't actually yeah. Dude, interview. There's a, there's a lot of ego with this guy. There's like a whole lot of ego. It's more like, 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 uh, like, like, uh, like I said, it's the universe according to Stephen Greer. It's like about how UFOs relate to Stephen and Stephen's opinions about how they relate. It's not, it's not all that objective, you know, well, and, and the, that's a problem. So the reason why I brought that up is because um, they were talking about organizing a, a music event. And like Stephen said to the young man, could you organize something like that? Because I, and he, it was almost like he said it, thinking that he wouldn't be able to do it. He goes, oh, yeah, I can do that. And it, it looked like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I could just imagine Stephen Greer at a rave. Yeah, no, it's this. <laughs> And no, and it's like, dude, you're going to have to start producing, Stephen. That's the thing. It, it, there's going to have to be results as because of this. And again, that's why I prefer TTSA. Jesus, can you imagine Stephen Gray or an acid? Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, oh, my God. Yes. I am the Lizard King. <laughs> Out to the end. He's the Lizard King. <laughs> Imagine I've just got images of Stephen Greer wearing nothing but a pair of boxer shorts with glow sticks attached to him. And not even that, naked with mud. 
<laughs> covered in mud, nude, <laughs> and leaves. <laughs> but listen, uh, Stephen, if you are watching this, I do love you to pieces. Uh, oh yeah, on. no, Steve, Stephen Greer has done a lot for ufology in some respects, and then it became, it became then over time, it became a lot about him. You know, uh, and, that, and that's, that's not. Thing. Yeah, he just talks about himself. Yeah, and his, his uncle who, was, uh, who built the lunar module and his kids and 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 shit I don't need to know about. <laughs> really. It, it is when you watch him, it's like the Greer show. Yeah, it is. It is very much. It's 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 it, and there's a lot of ego, dude. There's there's too much ego for it to be a science. You know, you can't approach it like this. Ufology is not about me or you, you know. He needs and, to take some notes from Bob Lazar. Yeah, go away for 20 years. Come back, become bigger than you were. Work for yeah. Dave Chappelle. I, I, well, it's it's gone quiet the Bob Lazar thing though now. Well, that's for now. Uh, I, I, it'll come back. Like I, I I'm certain. Like listen, the more disclosure comes out, the more, and the fact that Bob is willing to talk more, uh, I think we'll see we'll see more of Bob Lazar than perhaps we've ever seen. There was. Did you, did you see that clip that I sent you? with the TTSA suitcase mm. that had that object in there that actually kind of does... Re- I've forgotten the name of the the channel that I'm subscribed to. I'll put it in the description. I'll put it up now. But uh, this video is brilliant. Um, and he points out this suitcase, this this piece in the suitcase actually looks it's the description of what Bob Lazar is describing on the floor or wall of the UFO of the hexagons yeah it's got it's got tiny hexagons on it and that's also well a lot of materials are like that now ironically enough you know that's the new new all of a sudden that's like uh, uh, Bob was telling us about this in the 80s, and now that's the cutting edge of the 2020s. Um, and it took around the same amount of time that it would probably to develop something like that from, you know, that point, you know, working backwards. Uh, but, but this was a piece that TTSA have that they're investigating. Yeah, man, that's, again, man, there's TTSA's on, like, the, listen, DeLong keeps saying a lot of stuff is coming from them. They can't really talk about it. They're already starting to release uh, um, products. For instance, there's that band that they just released. That they they uh, got into a partnership with another company. And we talked about that a few months ago, like what they were going to do with that screen technology. And now we yeah. know, you know, because they're, they're, they're putting it on those trucks. Um, and they're nice. But that's just the beginning of this. There's a lot of stuff that's coming. Um, and I, I keep repairing myself. Like the long is now openly saying there's going to be, you know, the floodgates are opening. And it's not going to be very long. He, he literally says, like, soon this is coming out. And I would not doubt Tom DeLong. I'm saying, at the end of the day, even if you don't like Tom DeLong for whatever reasons, how often has he been wrong? Well, it's time to, like, there was that one time on Joe Rogan where he showed that uh, spaceship. Well, no, 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 no. That, that wasn't wrong. We don't know. We don't know what was shown. We don't know what was going on in that situation, and we don't. Let's I wait and see. Pardon? I think he was high. Could be. That's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was high. Like that's what you do on Joe Rogan. I think there's it's a, a big. Really... Dude, there's a big basket of, of weed edibles and oil and stuff yeah. in the center of the room. I'd be all over that. <laughs> oh yeah, and there's and dude, and he has like you know somebody mixing drinks. That's fun. <laughs> the. Yeah, I, I I think I've said it before. I, I say that a lot in this show, but he, I think he just, he was kind of showing the technology how it works. Mm-hmm. You know, that video kind of maybe that is how this thing does work. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he was showing it as being factual. This is a this is a real UFO. I think he was showing how it was worked, how it worked, yeah. but it came across completely wrong. You know. Yeah, but but also like uh, the things he was talking about, like how they're uh, basically trying to uh, create this. Like he he broke down what was going on with them trying to create an electromagnetic field that was strong enough 
to get these uh, these uh, fragments to become operational. And they're doing that now. They actually did updates. So that's the thing that what he told Joe Rogan was true in terms of what they were attempting to accomplish. They're, they're doing so now. Um, they said that they uh, couldn't find one, uh, like a, something that generated enough electromagnetic energy and like, you know, that existed conventionally. So I guess they're gonna have to build something new, but, but so be it. Um, they, it, it's long and the short is, is like, listen, it, it, like TTSA is like, all right, the next big thing they're going to be dropping is going to be that app, the, the vault, which has an AI component to it and also seems to have a social media component. It might be, you know, Instagram or Facebook for people like us, you know? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, this would be like amazing, amazing, amazing thing to have. Um, and, uh, you know, there's going to be other devices as well that are coming from this, from the analysis of these, these things that they've been doing. Uh, also, DeLong has been talking about how there's, uh, uh, they're working on energy devices and things. Like this is open, DeLong is talking, like, you know, this is like, don't listen to me, listen to Tom DeLong. Um, it's again, we're we're on a roll. When do you think we're going to see some of these energy devices? I don't know. However, I think somebody showed uh, years ago. I saw something on television involving magnetics, and the longest talking about magnetics, and somebody had this weird device that basically altered. Um, uh, 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 basically, it used electromagnetic energy to to make things look different, or, or, or in a different position, and it was really, really odd. And it worked on camera. They showed this thing on camera, well, and they like, were very, very like a ripple. No, not not in that sense, but like, all right, this guy he goes, he puts down this what looks like a yellow puck ring on the floor. And this guy was working out of Niagara Falls, as I recall. And um, they had these two investigators, and one was a, a very tall man and was an average sized lady. And uh, they had the tall man on the one side and the average sized lady on the other side. And then they made them rotate around so that they would, you know, if he was on the right, he would be on the left, and she was on the left, she'd be on the right. And when they did that, the woman was taller than the man appeared taller than the man yeah and then they kept doing it again and again and this was in real time and they were freaking out because they couldn't believe that this was going on now uh, this was on a show by a guy named brad mesner i mean i'm brad meltzer pardon me uh, who's a science fiction writer he's a comic book writer he's great and he also does like you know a lot of conspiracy stuff in children's books and things like that he's had shows on the history channel and um i spoke to him last week briefly on uh, Instagram because he was doing a live stream. And uh, he basically, I was like, please, like, can you give, as I basically hit a dead end. I've been looking for this guy and more information about this for years. And um, he just referred me back to the episode, blew me off, like, oh, you can go back to that episode. Like, I was like, no, wait, but there's not enough to work on, you know, on the data that was given. But uh, it's there though. Um, I'll try to dig it up and, and like, you know, you can see for yourself. But yeah, man, it looks like something's been going on for quite some time. Um, people have been working in secret for quite some time on some very interesting stuff. And, um, and it's not, again, it's not known to most people, but it's there. And it looks like it's about to be getting its showcase. Uh, and I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of crazy stuff like uh, technology like miracles. As, as impressive as, as your grandmother, your great grandmother would find your cell phone we will find like these things that are coming out soon. Well, mate, look at, look at these things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a miracle. I, I, that, I can still remember when I was playing snake. And now I can play call of duty. Mm. Mm. See? Oh, well, phone. I love my same here, dude. Like I not ever going back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And the, apparently the next one, I've got a OnePlus. The next one of the, one of these, um, 
can the camera there's a big thing on the internet about it where people are kind of going a bit mad over it can actually see through objects huh. yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah the first there's... phone that can do it the new one of these so you it mainly black plastic it can see all the circuits through it but it's crazy yeah of course and you know what dude that's 30 year old military technology and they decided that they can sell to you now yeah what yeah. else is what what else do they have you know what i'm saying and that's like like really dude they're giving see-through stuff to, to regular people and they have like dude and that's a watered down version i guarantee you if i was a teenager with that phone oof. oh yeah okay. no, it's chaos uh, privacy is a thing of the past <laughs> yeah like, I, I think it just sees through kind of i don't i don't know if it sees through clothes you would hope not not well, they much. had a video. Not you know, there was a video. There was a video camera that did that. Yeah, not much years ago. See, you know, and if you you you're probably going to see everything anyway if you see somebody in PVC. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah, like like everything is like there's no secrets. In fact, that's one of the reasons why this is coming out probably is because they know we'll know because we'll be able to look in. You know, and, and and so it has to come out. It's the only so, way to save your credibility. We have been going for about an hour now. So before I go, can you just remind the folks what's 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 there's that little tidbit coming soon? Oh yeah, there's uh, there's something coming, uh, something very very interesting. Um, probably gonna start a couple fights, but that's ufology. Um, uh, and honestly, the truth is the truth, and it is what it is. And um, none of us gets to say, you know, none of us gets to say in this. We get to deal with this as it comes, you know, that we need to stop making the subject the realm of wish fulfillment. You know, we, we, we got to stop using this ufology to, to paint these elaborate fantasies that we like and actually hunker down and get to the real serious business the figuring out what this technology is, what this means, who they are, uh, and how this affects us and where we're going with this, you know, and, and stop with these, these derailments and these like weird culty religions. And like, we're not going towards religion. We're going away from religion and more towards science and fact in a way that we've never, ever had before as much as even with all the technology we have, you know, and, and that increasing, this is, Inevitable. The singularity is coming early. And that's the that's the big thing. The singularity probably already happened. Do you understand that? The singularity might already be here in certain areas. And like this is inevitable. This is like my God. You know, it, it begins with UFOs and aliens, but it doesn't end there. I mean, did, did you hear about the alternate reality discovery? That's incredible. Like, 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 my God, we're really getting there, aren't we? Give me goosebumps, Oz. Pardon? You give me goose pimples. Yes, my, I have them too, just telling you this shit. Like, oh, my God, I've been doing this my whole life. I'm like, dude, I've been so happy in spite of this crazy this madness going around. You know, I, I, I you know, like, it's, this is like, this is great. Like, I, I can't wait. Bring it on. Oz, you get in touch with your contact to try and get in touch again. As soon as we can release this, the better. Amen. Osvaldo Franco, it has been a pleasure having you on Alien Addict. And I want you to stay safe, my friend, when you're out doing your errands for people. Um, And uh, anybody um, in the comment section, please uh, ask questions. Um, yeah, like if you want to listen, if you want to ask me stuff, like like I'll be in the comment section too. Go, you know, fire away. Where uh, can they find you, Oz? Are you, are you big on well, Instagram? I have my Instagram. I have an Instagram account, but I'll also uh, like you know, in the episodes I'm on, I try to leave a pre- like a like you know, some comments or answering stuff. Like like feel free to like my, my name is Osvaldo Franco. It's not a pseudonym. Um, you can find me. You can get in touch with me. Oz, if you leave a comment on this video when once once it's up, uh, I'll pin it. That way, people can ask you some questions. Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and get me in the next couple of days too if you can, because I'm I'm gonna be laid up. 
So like, it's a great time to, you know, uh, just basically be having like, you know, I'm going to have a bag of ice on my knee and have it elevated and answering questions. Cool, mate. Cool. Well, I will, I will leave you to it, my friend. And thank you very much for coming on. Always brother. I'll see you later, man. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. And we're always in touch. Guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon page. I will leave the description below together with Osvaldo's Instagram page. Good night, God bless, and mind the bugs don't bite.